Hey everybody, how's it going? Today, I have got another not very fun task to do. It's time to do some rewiring again. <laughs> I know, it feels like I just did this not too long ago. So after my interface upgrade uh, to the UFX Plus, I've got more ins and outs, more line ins and outs on the back of it than I had before with the UCX. And after spending some time thinking about how to kind of incorporate those with what I have, my current patch bay is uh, completely full. It's just at capacity. I've got no room. With an investment of below a couple hundred dollars, I just ended up getting another uh, patch bay just like I have an Art P48. So I'll be adding a second patch bay and I'm, I would say I'm upgrading, but I'm kind of cross grading my cables. Uh, right now, all my cables behind the uh, patch bay back there are all Monoprice Premier Series. I think they're fine cables. They're good, not great cables. I, I think they're a good cost-effective solution if you buy them in bulk and you can kind of cut down the shipping costs. Actually, I think I've got one sitting around here somewhere. Yeah, here we go. Here's one. Um, so they're like these things here, which I can't get a focus on. Great. All right, there we go. My goodness, that was a little tough. So they're Premier Series. They have these gold-plated connectors and I just lost focus again. All right, whatever. Um, I think they're, they're good cables but they are pretty much sold out. They're just tapped out and I hadn't been able to find them in stock to buy more of them. So I'm kind of like cross grading. Uh, I'm gonna get rid of the individual TRS uh, cables to go from my interface to my patch bay. And I'm going to several of these. It's just a single snake cable with eight different TRSs. These are by Hosa, another good but not great cable uh, brand. So I don't really think it's gonna be much of a upgraded cable quality, but having them all tied together like this uh, back behind the rack is gonna help me avoid some of the pain like what I experienced just trying to get the interface swapped out for the old one. That was a nightmare. So I got a couple of these uh, eight channel three footers. I got a couple of eight channel uh, nine footers and a one that's like an insert cable uh, since my FMR stuff, the RNC and the RNLA uh, used unbalanced connections and you can just use an insert cable. And I, well, I can't zoom in with this lens, but uh, back there, I'm, I had pulled the Art Pro VLA out of there uh, a while back because I thought I was going to sell it, but uh, you know, I'm, I'm getting the impression that the uh, ship has sailed <laughs> on, uh, on that one. So I might see if I can rearrange things in my rack a little bit, fit that back in there, get it wired in. Another couple channels of compression, uh, hardware compression, so I would enjoy that. But just like last time, this all means scooting the desk out away from the wall, disconnecting a bunch of stuff, crawling around back there with all the spider webs and dust bunnies and all that stuff. So I figured, why not? I'll take you along for the ride and uh, let's see how this goes, all right? Oh, and I guess I should mention that also this, and I'm not sure if you can see it in the camera angle from here, but this place is an absolute mess. Uh, I need to do some cleanup and some tidying before I even start moving stuff around because I'm just, I'm tripping over stuff everywhere. I've let the room get really cluttered. So I guess first things first, let me get some clutter taken care of, get some room opened up to uh, move in here. And I'll take it from there.
Okay, well, we got the desk moved out, and you can, I mean, you probably recognize this mess from, <laughs> from last time. The desk itself isn't too bad. I mean, it's not pretty, but got this whole disaster happening here and back in here. Oh my goodness. Uh, get a little light up in here. I've unplugged most everything. I unplugged everything from the TRS patch bay. Oh, whoops, looks like I missed one back there. Not to grab that. Since I'm adding another patch bay, I'm gonna be kind of rethinking how I've got everything laid out. And I haven't really come to any conclusions yet. I should do that before I start plugging stuff back in. But I'll have six of the eight TRS uh, cables, uh, uh, TRS outputs from the UFX Plus. I'll have eight TRS analog inputs from the UFX Plus. Uh, I've got the eight analog outs from the ADA-8200. I'm leaving the XLR patch bay alone. I'm only using four of those anyways. And then I get the distinct pleasure of getting all of this stuff wired back into it. Hooray. So I guess I better get started. I don't think that either, <laughs> I don't think that uh, it's gonna be very helpful to uh, film me doing all that. It's not very interesting in the first place, but I will check back in after my first round of plugs and unplugs. All right, see you in a few minutes. Okie dokie. Oh my goodness. That sucked. I don't recommend it. I don't recommend it at all. Let's take a... I haven't got it all completed yet. I had not got the desk back against the wall yet. But... These are all the cables that I got out of there. And I tell you what, my cable management skills are pretty poor. Uh, <laughs> still got a mess back here. I mean... That doesn't, that doesn't look good at all. But at least that's the part you don't see when it's all pushed up against the wall. But I did get all the Hosa TRS cables hooked up, the Hosa insert cables there for the FMR stuff. I got the VLA racked back up and he's in on the, uh, on the Hosa party. And then all the ins and outs into and out of the interface are those Hosa snake cables as well. So yeah, this is, this is a mess. Honestly, I got to a point where I just didn't care anymore, so <laughs> it's not gonna get any prettier. And I got this whole disaster of a extension cables or uh, power strips and everything here. But I think it's time to move this thing back up against the wall. I think that I got everything hooked up correctly. I had to uh, use my whiteboard here and write down kind of, you know, figure out how I wanted everything. Hopefully my table's gonna, or my desk here is gonna hold up. That leg looks like it's a little point in the wrong direction. This desk just makes me nervous. <laughs> Those of you that saw a couple years ago, my vlog of uh, moving in and had the legs kind of break off on me. So it's a little fragile, all in all. All right, I'm gonna go see if I can recruit some help to get this thing back into place. See if I can't get my studio back together here before my wife has to go back to work.
Well, here it is. A new day, the same clothes. <laughs> I was I was thoroughly just beaten down after uh, getting all that done yesterday. I was in a hurry to get it all done in one day because my wife, I, I needed my wife's assistance to get the desk moved. This desk is too fragile to move single-handedly. You have to pick it up entirely, all the weight off of all four legs, and then scoot it and sit it back down. And that's not a uh, job for a single pair of hands. I got kind of in a hurry and I was so just tired. I can't say I did just a great job. Things are already kind of a mess again here, but uh, let's uh, take a quick look. So the distressors and all the FMR stuff are still right where they were. Over here, I took the two uh, DBXs and I moved them over to the sidecar. So I moved the um, monitor switcher and my BAE preamp down and made room for the Art Pro VLA, uh, Pro VLA 2. So he's back in service for now and uh, doing his thing over here. And over here on the rack itself, let's take a look. Let's see if I can do this just from where I'm sitting. So the, the old DBX, this is an old um, 90s DBX 286. And I use that mainly for Skype calls and stuff. And right below that is a modern DBX-286S. And that's what I do all my YouTube videos through. That's what I'm speaking through right now. And below that is the new UFX Plus, which is kind of the whole reason behind this whole shuffle around. Uh, the trusty old ADA-8200. It's a little dark, but uh, he's hanging out there. That's the 8-channel preamp that's connected via ADAT into the interface. And below that is the art. Oh, what do they call their? I can't remember what they call it. This is a 12, uh, 12 slot XLR patch bay. And I'm only using like the first four slots or so from that. That's really dark, isn't it here? Let me see if I can make this any easier on us both. So below that XLR patch bay is my old uh, TRS uh, patch bay from art. So that's a P48 there. And below that is the new one. Exact same thing. So they're they're twinsies. And since I got rid of my rack mount computer chassis, uh, I just kind of made up the rest, the other four uh, spaces here with blanks. I got a couple of vented blanks and then an actual blank blank. And as you can see, you know, I've got some stuff already patched into it. So one of the decisions, like really the hardest decision I had to make was how was I going to arrange the patch bays? And I can't really say that I made the right decision. Uh, I just kind of made a call and I'm going to see if this is going to work for me or not. Let's bring the light with us over here. Let's, I had to uh, kind of uh, draw it out on the whiteboard. So let's take a quick look at what my thought process is here. So on the top, I just wrote out all 24 inputs of the top patch bay. And I decided to just go ahead and do all of the uh, outputs of the army uh, on their just on the top row, all the inputs for the army, the analog at least, analog outputs, analog inputs on the bottom row, and then the analog outputs of the ADA on the top row. Uh, so that's the, so all of the entire top patch bay is all just inputs and outputs in and out of the interface. On the bottom patch bay, that's where I decided to just put all the gear. And I didn't make, I didn't take advantage of any sort of default pathways. I don't have the patch bays making any sort of default connections, you know, behind the scenes. And that was kind of the big tough decision there. I may end up regretting it. I may end up doing it differently, but that's just what I came up with. Again, I was kind of in a hurry. <laughs> so if I want to make any connections from my interface, to any of this gear, I'm gonna have to use the patch cable for it, for everything. And that may end up being a pain in the butt. I may change my mind later, but that's a problem for another day. So that's kind of the lowdown. Sorry about the uh, background noise and also sorry, I can't seem to keep myself in frame here, but uh, if there's any background noise, it is exceptionally record-breaking cold in most of the US right now. It's Valentine's Day today, and if uh, if you live in the U.S., 
Uh, you're probably feeling it as well. Here in Denver, we uh, got down to about uh, minus 12 Fahrenheit last night. And right now it's about minus uh, eight outside. So it is exceptionally cold. So the furnace is running. The furnace is just right on the other side of that wall uh, of this room. I am not about to turn it off. <laughs> and also with all the cold, uh, it's been exceptionally dry here lately. I got that light turned up way too bright. One second. Uh, it, with, with the cold comes the exceptional dryness as well. So my humidifier is just absolutely cranking <laughs> in, in an attempt to keep the humidity uh, out of the teens in this room right now. So pardon any random background noise going on right here. So all of this, this entire, you know, project here was just to accommodate having more analog inputs and analog outputs uh, in and out of my interface. I use those analog inputs and outputs, you know, just like you saw to loop in external gear, mainly compressors. I just, I just love external compressors. <laughs> And, you know, the second patch bay was just a cheaper way uh, than what I was thinking. Uh, eventually what I would love to do, since the UFX Plus has two sets of ADAT ins and outs, so each of those can carry eight channels. And so right now I have it paired with a single Behringer ADA 8200. What I would love to do is eventually get uh, a brand called Ferrofish, which is another brand, kind of a sister brand to RME, make some AD converters. And they have one called the, I think it's called the Pulse 16. And it takes two sets of ADAT, two eight channel ins and two eight channel outs, and gives you 16 line ins and 16 line outs on the back. And that would pair up perfectly with a patch base setup like this. I really wanted to get uh, like a, a 96 point patch bay that uses the, the TT, the tiny telephone Bantam plugs. So you can get 96 of them in, in one single rack space. And then they have like DB25 connectors, which is just a way to cram a whole bunch of analog ins and outs into one. I think you can get eight ins or eight outs into one single DB25 connector, which would be great. Except those patch bays cost about a thousand dollars each. And then that Feral Fish Pulse 16 costs about 1300 bucks as well. So given that I just splurged and spent way too much money on the, uh, the interface and the 12 mic to link it to, not really in the mood to spend another couple thousand dollars right now. So for 120 bucks, I got another art patch bay. And for about 50 bucks, I got the uh, Hosa snake cables, which actually worked very well. Uh, it does remind me, like, I didn't mean to, like, you know, bag on, on Hosa cables or anything. I think Hosa makes good cables, but I, I don't think that they're in that market of, like, that kind of prestige kind of cable. You know, they're not trying to compete with Mogami and Canare and, and brands like that when it comes to interconnect. I think they're, they're just trying to make good cable for a, an affordable price. I haven't noticed, I, I've tested my connections, I haven't noticed any extraneous noise or anything coming from it. Well, I have probably blabbered on long enough uh, in this one. I, I was just doing this and I figured I'd bring you all along for the ride. So I think that will do it for me here this time. I'll be back to, before too long. We'll have to take a look at how I've got the drum set up and everything upstairs, but we'll save that for another day. I still need to do a, a little bit about the uh, advanced remote control USB from RME as well. And so maybe next time we'll take a look, now that everything's kind of hooked up, take a look at how I use it, what I actually do with it, why I think I need such a fancy setup. Well, thank you all so much for watching. I really appreciate it. I think that will do it for me this time, and I will see you guys again next time.